morning. Welcome to Every Christian Church. I hope you come expecting a blessing. God is doing so many things in our lives. You've got to trust Him. Even when you don't look, remember this. When you can't see His hands, you can always trust His heart. And that's sometimes what you just got to do. Just trust His heart. All right. Hang in there. We're having a good time today. And God's in control. Large and in control. Amen. 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 Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Thank God good. Y'all say this with me. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all say it again. I almost heard you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And then, of course, Eddie, Eddie put me up to this. I thought it was so cool. If I can get it up there. Yeah, my, my, my. Let's see here. Praise God. If it ain't one thing, it's ten. Amen. Let's see here. No, no wonder. Look. Let's try not to mess it up. That's right. I just already did it. Hold on. There we go. I can work a foot switch, but I couldn't work this switch. Ready? Now let's try it again. All right. Say it again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory. Glory. And then, that's right. And then here's what Eddie always tells me. Every time we say this, Eddie always says it's behind us. So here, here goes. Try not to mess it up. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Aren't you glad to be in this church this morning? Let's say this together. These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one, except my worship. Oh, Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. In the next week or so, DC will be back with us, but he's, I can't even keep up with it where he's at today, but he's somewhere working a hospital or rescue squad somewhere. I just pray that God uses him to save lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Luke's trying to say, God is in control. God is in control. All the time. God is in control. We're going to sing, we're going to do some old, but we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, so it's going to be really, really cool, okay? So I'm not sure which order we're going to do them in yet right now, but we're going to do them. Amen. Luke's trying to say, we're going to get it done. Okay, ready? This, let's do this. Uh, this is the light of mine. Ready? This is the light of mine.
and give that testimony. In Christ Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. 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 Uh, how many know that Jesus loves you? Amen. We're going to sing it. And people say it's just a little kiss song. No, it's not. This is a John 3 16 song. It's for everybody. Amen. You ready? Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me.
somebody to tell you you're looking good today in spite of yourself. Tell them. <laughs> All right. Y'all got something really good today. All right. Get, get your. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're not even going to get our Bibles out at the time. We're just going to stand up. And and uh, I'm going to go from there. Ready? We're going to we're going to finish up where we're last, where we were last week. But uh, it's really important, very important, that we really pay attention and listen because I believe God is doing something special for us. We just got to trust Him. Amen. Somebody say I trust Him. I trust Him. All right. I trust Him more and more each day. Amen. He's proving Himself more and more each day. That's the cool thing. If I do this right, we'll be in good shape. There we go. Praise God. Four reasons that you shouldn't give up when the going gets tough. Anybody been in any tough times lately? Anybody had any rough stuff lately? I can look out amongst you, and I, I can tell you, I know there's some been through some, some, some rough stuff, but you know what? We're still here. Amen. The thing I've always learned is when you can't see his hand, you can always trust his heart. When you can't see God's hand, you can set to somebody that when you can't see his hand, you can always trust his That's heart. Right. Amen. Because God's got you. Amen. God's got you tighter than you ever could imagine. You know, I was thinking about uh, uh, God was on a was doing a return flight in the airplane. He was doing his return flight home and uh they were just giving some gourmet brownies and cookies and not hungry. The guy decided to save them for later, so he placed them in an air sickness courtesy bag. A bark bag. After the plane landed, the guy got up and the flight attendant approached him and said, would you like for him to dispose of his bag? He said, no thanks, I'm saving it for a snack later. <laughs> the reason I'm joking, look, it just went so well with going through stuff. Don't give up when you're going through tough stuff, okay? I mean, get, cut me a little slack. I thought that was really kind of, okay. Did you hear about I-95 I yesterday? I-95 started moving some stuff and, and a big vapor road truck overturned on the highway. And the police report was there had been no congestion in the area for eight hours. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad I brought that along to kind of help. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. Matter of fact, I'm going to get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. God is so good to us every day. God is so, so good. He's always trained. When, matter of fact, when you're going through something, remember this. You're thinking that, that things are getting bad and you can't handle it. When in actuality, what God is doing is he's training you for something coming up and you're going to be able to handle it because God let you go through something beforehand. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. You got your Bible? Say Amen. amen. You don't say on me? All right. The Bible, there should be a Bible in front of you on the pew up there. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. He gives us the victory. Have you seen the fight you're in? You're fighting the fight. Here you are fighting the fight. And now you're saying he gives you the victory. Yes, he gives you the victory because he gives you the strength to fight the fight. He gives you, according to your faith, he will do for you what you need done. Amen. So, but thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor... Is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Stretch your hands this way. Father, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well and you're on the throne. And we ask you, God, right now, Lord, to 
minister to every one of us today, Lord. I know that this is a very trying time that there's some collective problems that we're all going through and our nation's going through and the world's going through. And then there's some uh, family problems and there's individual problems and, and uh, conflicts and things that just seem to boggle our mind and takes our attention away from what we're supposed to be doing. And many times we just feel like quitting. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us, God, to get a new perspective. A new perspective of what's going on. Because, God, I know many times when I ask for your help, you didn't change the situation, you changed me. And, Father, I ask you today, Lord, if there's a way to change situations for people today, do it. But if the situation is not going to change, change them so that they can be able to handle it. We trust you. We praise your name. We know, God, that you got this, and we trust you 100%. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Turn around, look around, point it in the house of God. Point at somebody. You ain't got to touch this point. Hey, glad you're in the house of glad God. Glad you're here. All right. All right, so now, I'm going to just quickly, this was the introduction last week, but it went. It was the whole an hour and something introduction, so I'm still going to just throw it up there for some continuity. Is is this? I'm not even going to look at it last week. I'm just going to read it. Is life can never take you when God's grace cannot sustain you. You can relax in that and relax. Number one, realize nobody's perfect. Nothing but God's word is perfect. E, enjoy God's unconditional love. L, let God handle things. Uh, A, act in faith, not fear. E, exchange your perfectionism for God's peace. Okay. That was from last week. That was our actual sermon. It was supposed to be the intro, but it was the sermon. And then right here, fear shifts my focus from power to problem. So today, I'm not saying that fear, or excuse me, that faith removes your problems, but faith actually brings power into the problem. You hear what I'm saying? Faith doesn't mean you don't have problems. Anybody tells you that, you need to go tell them they need to go somewhere. Okay? You will have problems. The faithful, the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God does what? He delivers them out of them all. So there is trouble coming. Amen? But just make sure, uh, I wrote a mighty army one day this week that said, make sure that the weapon formed against you is not you. Whoa. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Amen? So, so you got to watch this stuff, Okay? So, so fear shifts my focus from power to problems, but faith shifts my focus from, from, from the problem to power. Amen? And you see God's doing something. So now watch this. Uh, faith may not stop the problem, but it will bring peace and comfort, and it takes the problem out of our hands, and it puts it into God's. But fear, fear itself will never stop the problem. It just expand, uh, extends it. It compounds it. And it depletes your peace and it depletes your comfort and it stays in your hands. And I honestly don't need my problems to stay in my hands. I promise you, I don't want my problems. What we just saying, he got the whole world in his hands. He got all of my problems in his hands. Some of us should have been singing, I got all of my problems in my hands. I got all of my problems in my hand. That's right. I got all of my problems in my hand. Dear God, will you leave me alone? Come on, somebody say amen or ouch. Ouch. <laughs> okay. So, 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 so here it is. We're, we're going to talk about four reasons uh, that you should never think of quitting. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that it's not going to come. It's going to get there. It's going to, it's going to, going to be there. Okay. But there's a difference in fleeting through your mind. I can't stop a bird from landing on my head, but I can't prevent him from building a nest. Amen. Some of y'all, you hear, you just need to quit. Okay, that's the bird landing on your head. Before he gets a chance to start building that nest, shoot him away. Because we've become too far to quit now. Amen? So, 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 here you go. Here it is. Number one. Oh, man. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Please don't. Have you got the big talkers in here? <laughs> The other problem with big talkers is a lot of times they're small walkers. I'm not talking about, I'm talking, <laughs> you got to understand what I'm saying about it. When I say big talker, I'm not talking about talking big for God. I'm not talking about that. I hope we all are big talkers for God. All of us. 
And I hope we all got a lot of faith for big talkers for faith. I'm just talking about the person's always going to do something. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, you watch me. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. I'm going to, I'm going to. What I've discovered is the big talkers are usually small walkers. They, they, they love to start it, but they very seldom finish it. Amen? And so we're judged by not what we start. We're judged by what we finish. And this is bad. Now, a few people would love to start some bad things. They're judged by that. I'm not talking about that. Okay? But, but we're judged by what we finish more than by what we start. Okay? Uh, uh, you're not going to be remembered for the things you start, but rather the things you finish. And, and, and there was a Christian race. Uh, and we talk about the Christian race, but there was literally a race in Rome during the Olympics. This race was not who got to the finish line first. This race was who got to the finish line with the torch still in. Wow. Some of us are so in such a hurry to finish the race that our torch goes out and we're running on empty. And we don't finish what we're starting, what we're starting. So it's important, remember this. God's not judging you on getting started. John, God's judging you on finishing. Alright? That's where the rewards come in when you finish something. I, I feel good when I start something, but if I don't finish it, I don't feel so good. Amen? But when I start something and then I finish it, there's a feeling of great accomplishment when we finish something. I, you know, we talked about this at homecoming, and I'm going to talk about it just for a minute. It is, is when the children of Israel have been taken into captivity. When they began to come back and they began to rebuild in their place. Uh, Ezra came back and he rebuilt the temple. Didn't take long. He rebuilt the temple. But the problem was the temple, although that, that was the, represents the relationship with God, never represents our relationship with God. The problem was there was no walls. We talked about the homecoming is how big these walls were, how tall they were, how thick they were. Chariots to race on them, they're big walls. The problem was these walls were broke down and they hadn't been rebuilt. And so although they had a relationship with God, the relationship was not protected. Their families were not protected. Their, 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 their livestock was not protected because although they had a relationship with God, they were still at the mercy of the enemy. Now, now, now I'm going to tell you something. There's been times in my own life when I knew I was right with God, but I had that relationship, but my relationship was unguarded. Don't y'all shout me down. Have you ever been there? You're still a child of God, but your relationship's not guarded. And if you're not careful, Satan will pick you apart like buzzards on a highway going after roadkill. It's important to have that wall. So now, now, so Nehemiah, so look, look, before Nehemiah came, we all talk about Nehemiah, but before Nehemiah came to build the wall, do you know how long it took them to build the wall? Ezra came in a matter of months, and there was the, there was the temple. And needed the wall, and for 150 years, people started that wall. But they never finished it. Guess who her name is? Can you name off all the guys that started it and didn't finish it? It's amazing, isn't it? But who's the guy we hear about? Nehemiah. Because Nehemiah came, and what they couldn't do in 150 years, Nehemiah did in 52 days. Because Nehemiah, those people had a mind to work. They had their attitude and their attention on building the wall and protecting their relationship. So, so again, so remember this. You're here by Nehemiah, you don't hear about the rest of them because he didn't just start the wall, he finished it. So think about that in your own life, okay? So yeah, that's number one reason not to quit, because, or not even think about quitting, is because you're going to be judged. Matter of fact, it's better that you didn't even start it if you're not going to finish it. Okay? I know that sounds bad, but it is the truth, right? Now, number two. There you go. You're rewarded. Hey, you're rewarded because you finished strong. Yep. All right, here we go. Number two. Y'all ready? That was number one. I'm not keep you long today, I promise. Number two. I promise you tomorrow's a better day. How many has ever said, let me just sleep on it? 
You had a bad decision, you had bad problems, and or you couldn't figure out something at work, or you couldn't figure out something with your family. And you just went to bed and you prayed to God and said, God, you gotta help me. And maybe in your sleep God gave you a dream or God showed you. And and uh, but the biggest thing is while you're sleeping, your your, your spirit is purged. And while this purging is going on, then when you wake up you feel better. Amen? So, 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 remember this. This is not a James Bond movie. Tomorrow is a better day. Amen? Somebody say that. Tomorrow is a better day. Tomorrow is a better day. Okay, watch this. We being may endure for a night. That word night does not mean 24 hours. That word night means dark season in your life. A dark season. Anybody had any dark seasons? Oh, yeah. I, I can name up a lot of dark seasons, but it says... Weeping may endure, that word weeping means intense emotional pain. Intense emotional pain may endure for a dark season in your life, but joy comes in the morning. That word morning means breakthrough. God's going to give you breakthrough. How many read Mighty Army uh, this morning? Let me see if I can pull it up. It was actually very, very, very awesome. And, and, and I was talking to Linda, who's still at ICU with her dad. And I said, girl, this body arm is for you this morning. She literally said, you too. <laughs> I've yet to see a breakthrough without a been through. Wow. I've yet to see a breakthrough without a been through. So look, you might be going through something today, but don't give up. Don't quit. Because better days are coming. Sometimes God's working things, and you just got to let Him work. You know, however bad it may look today, take comfort that tomorrow, and I promise you, it's going to be different. It's kind of like the disciples. The disciples, it was, it was, uh, uh, maybe Friday now, because Sunday's coming. On Friday, they saw Jesus die. But on Sunday, they saw Him resurrect. Okay? So, but look, here, here, here it is. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. And before you know it, things will suddenly start to make sense. Amen? Number three, I thought it was not going to be long today, unless I get hung up on one of them. And the more y'all the more y'all participate, the faster I go. Hi. Oh, here we go. Y'all woke up. I think I just keep the beehive. Y'all ready? Number three. Hope is raw material for faith. Think about this. Faith can move mountains. See, people ask me all the time, what's the difference in hope and faith? Faith actually is believing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but hope sees that light. So watch. Ready? Let's see this. Watch. Faith can move mountains, but hope moves your faith. If you don't have hope for something, you're not going to believe God for it. Hope is when you get that in your heart that this can be different, this can change. Faith is when you connect with God in the middle of it. Faith connects you to God. Hope connects with your heart. Faith connects with God. And you're going, I believe God's got this and I'm going to trust Him no matter what. I, I, again, I, this team Bethany, God's got this. I gave away five of them at the hospital this week. I was walking out, 11 o'clock the other night, walking out, and there was a young man in there. And I'm walking out, uh, and I, and I can go over there because I got my chaplain badge, and so I have a chaplain badge. I walked in, I come back, and he said, Sir, and I hadn't even talked to him. I didn't know he'd been watching me. I hadn't talked to him. He said, Sir, young guy, too. He said, Sir. I said, Yes, sir, what is it? He said, uh, Where are you, Pastor? I said, I pastor in Edward. You ever heard of Edward, North Carolina? He said, Yeah, I heard of Edward, North Carolina. He said, uh, uh, His uncle or somebody, Morris Chaplain church here. He said, I come down there all the time. I said, wow, that's cool. And he said, I just want you to know something hit like praying for you or something. And so I said, I, I was up here a lot a couple years ago. I was up here a whole year with Bethany. And before I knew it, I'd give him a, a, a God's got this because we're talking, talking about God's got this. And I walked out and he said, sir, he said, I just thank God. I said, why? He said, because I want him to be up here right now. He said, I don't work my shift. I was in the ER. He said, working my shift. And he said, uh, they need somebody up here right now because somebody had to leave. And he said, it's not by happenstance that I wound up. And I got up here just before you walked through. Wow. Isn't God amazing? How God works things. So, faith to move mountains, hope moves faith. All right? Now, I want you to watch this. 
Y'all read that out loud, that last one. The devil said. The devil will do anything in his power to make you hopeless. One more time. Y'all almost sound like you meant it. Say it. The devil will do anything in his power to make you hopeless. The devil will do anything in his power, and he has a lot of it, to make you hopeless. The Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 12 in the message, it says, Unrelenting disappointment or report with disappointment will not let go leaves you heart sick. But a sudden good break can turn life around. An unrelenting disappointment. Or one version says hope deferred. Okay? Hope deferred makes you heart sick. Alright? Watch this. I want you to remember something. As long as you're still alive, hope has a chance. And remember, hope is believing it can happen. Faith is giving it to God to see it happen. Alright? Hold on to your faith no matter what, and you're going to see God move. That's number three. I told you when it was through. Don't get carried away. Remember, y'all participate. You go faster. Home <laughs> later. <laughs> All right, let's read this. Let's read this together, okay? But not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Romans 5, 3 through 5. When you're going through something, just know that God's up to something. Ready? Here's, the, here's number four. The last one. Ooh, wow, what happened? That was fast. That was fast. I like when buttons get stuck. Unless you're on the elevator. They tell me to come out. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. There we go. There it is. Oh, it's kind of funny there was a slide to this one too. Look. No friction, no movement. That was cool. Yeah. Somebody say yes. Huh? Y'all looking at me like a mule looking at a new gate. Come on. There you go. Ready? Ready? Let me turn the second back. There we go. Did you know that there is positive and there's negative friction? Oh, let me go back up. Everything seems to go, but everything's going against you. Remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. One more time. When everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Amen? So now, there's positive and there's negative friction. You know what friction is? The Bible says, it says that, 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 that steel sharpens steel, a brother will sharpen a brother. It's counted as sharpens a brother. Steel against steel causes what? Friction. What does friction do? It actually causes pieces of metal to fall off. It actually shapes things. It gets it ready. It sharpens it. Steel sharpens steel. Metal sharpens metal. The same way, watch this. God allows these things in our life to sharpen us. So, so here it is. Here, here's a, a, a negative. A negative. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Proverbs 34 19. Affliction is a negative friction. Proverbs 27 and 17, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Sharpening friction is a positive friction. Brothers and sisters, I count on myself as taking hold of this, but it's one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind and straining toward that which is ahead. Philippians 3 and 13, that's a positive friction. Do you know that God uses positive and negative friction in your life to get you ready for what's coming? Positive and negative. <laughs> Positive and negative. I've never been to boot camp. We got guys who have been to boot camp, but I worked with a lot of guys. I worked with, a uh, matter of fact, I think I've, I've worked with about three or four drill sergeants. Okay, <coughs> and and I had one drill sergeant from the Marine Corps. I asked him. I was a young guy. I was trying to get in the military, or thinking about going to the military, but I was colorblind, and so what I wanted to do, they wouldn't let me do. And so I said, No, I, 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 I'll go to college instead. And I went college but he told me I said I said so you're a drill sergeant Marine Corps he said yep and I said uh, how'd you like it 
He said, well, I liked a whole, more, I liked it a whole lot more than they liked me. Talking about the people that he was, the boots, he called them the boots. And I said, did they really get angry? He said, they were so mad at me. They, they could chew me up and spit me out. He said, they hated me with a passion. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, well, let me tell you something. I said, why? He said, after they went into active service, he said, I got gifts sent to me. And I got cards sent to me from the same guys that hated me, thanking me for getting them ready because because of their training, it saved their life. He said, I can't tell you how much stuff and how much correspondence I've gotten back over the years from the guys that at one time hated me but now love me. Sometimes when you're going through things and you're, you're thinking, God, why are you like on this? Why are you letting this happen? You don't realize that later on in life that you're going to need this training. You're going to need what this is to get you through. As a matter of fact, look at this. Remember this. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll not leave you emotionally. I'm not going to leave you physically. I'm not going to leave you spiritually. The Amplified Version says, Let your character and moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, arrogance, lust, and craving for earthly possessions, and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give, give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not, in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, Relax my home on you. Assuredly not. So now, just real quick, once you remember this, we get really close. Brandon, you can get ready to start playing something. <coughs> All right, watch this. Wow, that's smaller than I thought it would. Y'all you know, got to trust me, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I want you to remember this. I, I just got back from the hospital last night and I was finishing that up. So I thought I had it, I reckon. I fell asleep at the wheel. <laughs> It'll be all right. Okay. Number one, once you remember this, always remember this. You're doing better than you think you are. You're always doing better than you think you are. Your emotions will lie to you. The enemy will lie to you. But stop looking outward and start looking upward. Because God never lies. And you have his word on it. Capital W. God never lies. You have his word on it. Number two. You're far more long than you think you are. Really? Yep, really. Though you're not where you want to be, praise God. And it sounds like an old cliche, but it's the truth. Though you're, though you're not where you want to be, thank God you're not where you were. Amen? Amen. Number three. God is doing more for you than you currently see. Don't let what's wrong with the circumstances around you keep you from worshiping the God that's alive within you. What you're going through is preparation for what He's going to do through you. Hear that? What you're going through is preparation for what He's going to do through you. One more time. What you are going through is preparation for what He's going to do through you. All right? Remember this. There's people in your path that need what you have. can't say that enough. There's people in your path that need what you have. Just this week, like I said, five of these, just this week, Linda's dad's in cardiac intensive care. Linda's up there, and I've been going trying to give her a little break at night. I've been trying to take care of my mother-in-law in the daytime, and now her daughter's helping out. So we've got we got three of us and her husband, of course, and we're all kind of rotating everything. But Linda's been there with her dad because she's the next of kin, and we'll leave that to that, okay? And so, so we got all that going on, and and <clears throat> going through the hospital, it's amazing because I run into people that if it hadn't been for this, I would not have run into. Even the 911 call and the paramedics that came as they're working on my father-in-law. 
a couple of guys were stepped out of the way. And before I knew it, I was ministering to them. Guys, I'd have never seen any other way. And that's what I thought about this. There's people in your path that need what you have. Listen to this real close. We will lose our way when we lose our life. Wow. This, we will lose our way when we lose our why. You got to believe that God's got you wherever you're at. He's going to use you no matter what you're going through. Finally, there's sometimes you got to stop carrying your burden and start sharing your burden. It's not the burden that always crushes you. It's how you carry that burden. You ever been trying to do something and somebody comes up and says, can I help you? And they go, no, I got this. You're watching. They're falling under the weight. And you're going, I, I can help. No, I got this. Okay. Well, let me help you. No, I got this. And you watch them fall under that load because they don't want you to think they're weak. I don't want you to think that they need help. But you got to learn that when somebody comes along and offers help, legitimate help, usually that's God sending them to help share your load. The Bible says that we are to bear one another's burdens. Galatians. Bear our own burden, bear one another's one, one burden. Those two burdens there, we bear our own burdens, it talks about knapsack. The smaller burdens you, you carry them, okay? But we're to carry each other's burdens. That's a heavy load that that will debilitate you. Learn to give somebody a chance to be a blessing to you. Now, I'm closing, but I want to do this one little thing here. I've studied Greek, and when I got into scripture, I was so blown away by this scripture in the Greek. I think I wrote several papers on this verse. And this is how this verse goes. Hebrews 10, 35 and 36 says, Do not throw away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. We'll break this down. In the Greek, this was written during Roman times, and it's got a background of war to it. So it says, throw not away your confidence. The King James says, cast not away your confidence. That word confidence is your weapon. It's your sword. That's one of the exact words for confidence is sword. Cast out of way, it speaks of a soldier going in battle, facing the enemy, and when the attack got too heavy, the soldier would either throw away his sword and run, or throw away his sword and surrender. And the writer of Hebrews says, don't get to that point where you're ready to cash in your chips. You're going to take your sword and you throw it down and give up or throw it down and run the other way. It says you're going to need to persevere so when you've done the will of God, when you've gone through this trial, I promise you God's will for you is not all rainbows skills. There's some tough stuff that you got to go through. Some tough stuff. When you think you can't take any more, you remember that Jesus Christ took that beat and took that cross and carried it seven miles. And was hung up on that cross naked.
for us. He didn't throw away the sword and surrender. He didn't throw away the sword and run. He did the will of God. He even said, God, if this cup is the other way, let this cup pass for me. But said, you know what? No matter what, God, not my will be done, but thy will be done. Have you come to that point lately where you're in the battle and just when you think it can't get any worse, it gets worse. <laughs> and the enemy will lie to you. Your emotions will lie to you. And get to ask you, is it worth it? Why don't I just quit fighting and give in to it? Why don't I just quit fighting and run? Because he wants you to throw away your confidence, your sword, and just give in. But the writer of Hebrews says, you got to persevere, which means to bear up under the load. Persevere, bear up under the load. you got to bear up under the load of that battle. Everything that Satan is shooting everything he can at you. Life is shooting everything he can at you. You're being hit from every side. It's bombarding you everywhere. When I think about this, I know most of y'all may not have seen it, but there was a movie out years ago that was based on some real experiences uh, from, the, from the director, and that was called Platoon. Y'all remember at the end of the movie? Uh, they were under a mass, massive attack. There were suicide bombers taking out uh, uh, command posts, and there was just everything. There was it was just bad. They were being overrun like you wouldn't believe. And I can't think of the exact words, but the commander says, "Drop everything you have on my position or my pause." And they said, excuse me, he said, you, I'm making the call. Drop everything you got on my paws. And just when you think all hell couldn't break loose anymore, when they dropped those bombs, all hell really broke loose. And I watched the military movie, and I'm thinking about my own life going through some struggles. When I say, God, I don't, just look, it's like New Jean said, when they got them trimmed with the links, he said, shoot up here, shoot up here. And, 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 and they said, we don't want to shoot up here, New Gene. We're scared we're going to shoot you. He said, shoot me. He said, just shoot up here. One of us got to have some relief. So we right now, you just need some relief. If you bear up under that pressure and under that load, God's not let you do it by yourself anyway. You're going to have him, although you might not feel him, because when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. I left the hospital last night, and I said, God, it would really be not. I did. I mean, I know y'all think I'm super duper more spiritual, and I walk around with a super, super spiritual cape all the time. But I don't. I'm a man. And I walked out of the hospital. I said, God, it sure would be nice to see your hand right now. And he spoke to me and said, trust my heart. Trust my heart. Trust my heart. Trust my heart. When you bear up under that load, after you've done the will of God, there's a reward coming. And it's a promise from God. Don't give up. Don't give me in. What I've discovered is the resistance is often the fiercest right before the breakthrough. The resistance that you're feeling is usually the greatest just before the breakthrough. And I'm getting ready to close. Trials are not a reason to give up. Our pain is not an excuse to quit. Be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Everybody stand. God is so good. All the time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. First, let me ask, is there anybody here? There's nobody looking around, every eye closed, every head bowed. Is anybody here to say, Pastor, 
Things are tough, but I, I don't think I can call on God because I, because me and him may not be on speaking terms right now, or me and him aren't as close as we used to be, and it, 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 it gets to me, and, and, and I really need to be closer to God. I'm not going to call you up here. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you and make a... Make, make you feel bad about that part. I want you to feel good about knowing that you got back right with God. So today, if you're what I'm talking about, you and God are on good speaking terms. You're not as close as you used to be with God. I like to beat you over the head with the Bible for you to know that. You know that. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you just lift that hand? This is the part, this is the hard part. This is where your faith kicks in. Just put that hand up quickly and say, I, I, I need to get closer to God. I need a closer walk with God. That's all. But just I need a closer walk with God. God, bless them right now. Let them see. Let them know. Let them understand. That when they draw close to you, you draw close back. And we trust you for that. Maybe you're here this morning and you and God are talking terms. And, 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 and you maybe feel like God's punishing you for something because of what you're going through. That's not how God works. Yeah, God will, God will take you to the woodshed, but don't think every time you go through something, God is punishing you. A lot of times when you're going through something, God is prepping you. There's a difference. Discipline comes in many packages. Discipline can come in a form of punishment for doing bad, or discipline can be a disciple where God is training you for something. And so I thank God that he trains us ahead of time so that we're going to be ready to hit the beach. And just like that, just like that drill sergeant said, God sent him presents and thanked him so much for helping them and teaching them and training them. And they, and they hated them when it was going through it. But afterwards, when they saw how it saved their lives, they loved him. But the same way right now, you may feel like God's doing the same to you, but you got to understand what you're going through is not to destroy you. What you're going through is to prepare you for what's coming up. You may be doing what you're going through just so you can help somebody else that's going through it. So if you're here this morning and you're going through it, and you begin to wonder what's going on. And if, even, uh, and this is the hard part, nobody's looking. You may be here right now and you've even thought about maybe not building a nest, but the bird has landed on your head a few times for you to quit. Just stop it. Just stop working. Just stop it. Because sometimes it just doesn't seem worth it. Nobody looking around. Can you just slip their hand up and say, that's me. That, that, that's me. I, I, I've been there. I, I, I've been there. That's, that's when God can do something, when you can actually be honest with him. Now, we're all going to say this together. First off, let me ask them one more thing. Maybe you and God are on talking terms. And you're not thinking about quitting, but you sure would like to get a little break because it really is tough. It seems like you just let go of one, one catastrophe and grab a hold of another one. And it's over and over and over again. It never stops. And you just need some breathing room. And God just to, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna stop the problem, can you at least give me a couple more shots? I'm I, I need some boost here. If I'm talking and you I, you know you're listening. Put that hand up. I, I gotta say to you to, to just give me some more. I just need some more. More of you. I just need it. I need your help. All right, let's pray together. Ready? Everybody pray together. One time. Father, I love you. I, love you. I, I, praise, your I praise your name. I thank you, I thank you. for your grace you. and your mercy. your mercy. I thank you, I thank you. that you love me you love no me. matter what. And that nothing can change that. Yeah, nothing can change that. Lord, Lord, I ask you right now, you right now to, guide to guide me in my decisions, in my decisions. To, guide to guide me in my devotion. And I ask you right now, God, to help me, help me. To, keep standing to keep standing when I feel like I can't. I rededicate my life to you. I thank you that I can draw strength from your power. And with your help, I will not throw away my sword and give up. I will not throw away my sword and run the other way. But I will persevere because you give me the power to do this. And I thank you for all that you do for me. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. God is good. That's right. I love it. Trials are not a reason to give up. Our pain is not an excuse to quit. Be strong. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all looking good. Did I tell y'all that already? Yeah. Most of y'all are anyway. <laughs> Brother Wayne. Let's, let's pray. Our Father God, we come to you today thanking you for life. Thank you for the love that you show us. Thank you for the mercy and grace you have upon us, Lord. Father, thank you for this best day, Lord. And Father, we ask you to hold us strong in thy hand, Father. When times get tough, Father, we always, we always say the tough get going, Father. And we know you're tough, Lord. We know you can scream in everything that you said you could and that you would, Father. We trust you, Lord, to take care of us and bring us back up next point in time. This and all things I'll always ask you to Amen and amen.